Western Alaska gillnet fisheries, where most salmon have been delivered in the round without being bled or chilled, and careful handling hasn't always occurred. The result is a lot of salmon that hasn't been delivered as a high quality product. To compete in today's world markets, both wild and farmed salmon, Western Alaska salmon fishermen need to improve quality. Some fishermen have proved that there are simple, inexpensive ways to assure quality, even on a small skiff. First and foremost is the awareness that the commercial salmon we catch is food for individuals and families who live far away. And the salmon for you, sir. Thank you. These people will pay a good price for it and buy it again if they are pleased with it. Which fish would you bring home to your family? These or these? In order to get top dollar for your salmon, they must receive high quality handling by you. With care, you can deliver fish that compete with any of the best wild Alaskan salmon on the market. Skiff fishermen who are participating in a high quality program with their processor and plant managers training fishermen in standardized vessel setup and handling practices must understand how to maintain the fresh quality of the premium product that is pulled out of the water. What is quality? Intrinsic quality is the condition of the fish while still alive and swimming. Each species of salmon and each run has its own particular characteristics. Intrinsic quality includes maturity and the general condition of the fish at the opener. Work with other fishermen, your processor, and the Alaska Department of Fish and Game to manage your fishery with quality and market value in mind. Within your fishing area, try to fish where the salmon are in the best condition. Sometimes this may involve trade-offs between volume and quality. Extrinsic quality refers to the quality of salmon after it has been caught, processed, transported, and marketed. When people talk about quality control, they are basically talking about minimizing all the bad things that can happen to a salmon from the time it hits your gear until it reaches the consumer. Once quality is lost, it cannot be regained. Gentle handling and quick chilling are the two most important things a fisherman can do to maintain a high quality product. Salmon quality problems include bruising, gaping, mushy flesh, scale loss, enzymatic deterioration, and bacterial deterioration. Bruising occurs when salmon are handled roughly, throwing fish, stepping on them, or banging them into hard objects. Lifting salmon by the tail can break blood vessels inside the fish the ridges in the bottom of your skiff can bruise salmon, particularly if you have the weight of a lot of other fish on top. Knots on older brailers can bruise salmon. If you use a brailer, make sure it is the newer knotless type. If you are pitching off to a processor, make sure they use knotless brailer too. Gaping is the separation of the muscle layers in the fish. It is caused by lifting the fish by the tail. But most gaping is associated with rigor mortis when fish stiffen up after they die. In warm temperatures, fish going through rigor mortis stiffen so quickly that connective tissues are torn and gaping occurs. Chilling your salmon as rapidly as possible is the best defense against gaping. Salmon that have been bruised, crushed, or suffer gaping deteriorate much more rapidly. This results in mussy texture and the early onset of rancidity. 
quick chilling is the best way to prevent gaping, bruising, and mussy texture. Some scale loss is inevitable, but too much lessens the value of your salmon. Gentle handling is the key. Keeping fish moist and getting them chilled quickly also helps reduce scale loss. As soon as they die, salmon are vulnerable to enzymatic deterioration. Enzymes that are vital to the fish when alive contribute to the breakdown of proteins after death. Belly burn is a common example caused by digestive enzymes. Crushing and higher temperatures will encourage enzyme activity. Again, chilling and careful handling are key to controlling it. The flesh of live fish is sterile, but the skin is not, and bacteria enter any exposed flesh after a fish dies. You can help minimize bacterial spoilage by keeping your skiff, slush bags, and totes clean and sanitary, and by chilling your salmon as soon as possible. There are simple things you can do to keep the salmon you catch in the best possible condition. Keep your skiff clean before the season starts. Wash it thoroughly and keep it clean throughout the season. Eliminate all the stuff you don't need for your fishing operation and make sure the things you need are in easy reach. Be sure that your gas tanks and fuel lines are in good shape and not leaking. Eliminate sharp edges, abrasive surfaces, and pointed objects that may come in contact with your salmon. Put together a cleaning and sanitation kit. Make sure all of your safety gear is in good order. Next, set up a holding area. Keep your salmon protected and chill. Toads are one method. Slush bags are another. Insulated totes are simple and fairly inexpensive. They act the same as a fish hole on a big boat. They are easy to use and keep your fish safe from contamination. Smaller totes work well in skiffs. One like this can hold about 400 pounds of chilled salmon in slush ice that's about 50 cohos. With fish and ice, the total weight is about 600 pounds. Most 18-foot skiffs can carry one tote, but check the carrying capacity of your skiff if you want to carry another. The tote must be secure to the skiff, attaching strong braces across the thwarts or between the boat seats works well. A loaded tote sliding around is dangerous. You or your crew could get hurt. Worse, an unsecured tote can cause your skiff to capsize. Slush bags are the other way to create a good fish hole on your skiff. A slush bag is made of heavy-duty coated waterproof nylon fabric. It will hold a mixture of water and ice to chill and protect your salmon. They come in standard sizes, or you can have one custom fitted for your skiff. They will last for years with proper care. Position the slush bag between the seats on the standard skiff. This setup will allow you to carry several hundred pounds of well-chilled salmon. A slush bag by itself isn't a good insulator, so it won't hold ice very long. A simple solution is inexpensive insulite, closed cell insulation. This will improve the chilling power of your slush ice system and will also cushion salmon from the metal ribs in many skiffs. The slush bag can be tied in place with cord or secured by aluminum hanging hooks. Now you are ready to go fishing. First thing to do is get the ice you'll need. Get it from your processor before you leave town. Or like these Quinnahawk fishermen, ice up from the ice tender on the way to the fishing grounds.
Make sure you keep plenty of ice so that you can properly chill your salmon. If the weather is hot and sunny, you'll need more ice than on a cool, cloudy day. These fishermen have plenty of ice and have calculated the way to make sure they are not overloaded. Try to set where conditions are best, that is where the fish are brightest and where you don't have to tow on your net too much. Keep your sets short so that the salmon are still alive when you haul back. As you haul the net, pick each fish carefully to avoid bruising. Bleeding salmon is easy and really helps quality. As you pick each fish, reach in and break the gill arches on one side. It only takes a moment and won't slow you down. Place the fish in the sluss ice, either in your tote or sluss bag. The fish will start chilling immediately, even as it bleeds out. The sluss ice will get bloody, but that is acceptable for short fishing periods. When delivering your salmon at the end of the day, continue to handle your salmon gently. Don't step on the fish. And if cannery workers are unloading your fish, make sure we are careful. Cleanup is the final job. Both cleaning and sanitizing are important. They prevent the buildup of bacteria that can infect your next load of salmon. Cleaning is the physical removal of dirt, fish slime, and blood. Sanitizing chemically kills any remaining bacteria with chlorine. An essential part of your skiff setup is organizing a good cleaning and sanitizing kit. It includes a five-gallon plastic bucket, preferably one with a lid to help keep things organized. The bucket holds all your material and is used to mix cleaning and sanitizing solutions. For cleaning, use a cleaner provided by your processor or an unscented household dish soap. Add to your kit a couple of stiff brushes and a couple of sponges. For sanitizing, chlorine bleach is one of the most effective bacteria killers available. This is a complete cleaning and sanitizing kit for your fishing operation. Cleaning everything is the first job. Use plenty of water to rinse as much as you can. These Guinhop fishermen pull up onto the shore of a fast-moving stretch of river. They can rinse the slush bag in the river and use the river water to rinse the skiff. After rinsing, mix up some cleaning solution, soap and water, and scrub the inside of your skiff and your slush bag or tote. This fisherman scrubs his slush bag on a clean gravel beach, but you can do it inside your boat too. Be thorough, it only takes a few minutes each day. Now rinse all the soapy clean surfaces with plenty of clean water. Getting all this water out of the skiff can be chore, but bailers can be made for nothing from old plastic jugs. If you have an electric start engine, you can rig up a 12-volt pump that will make your cleanup job even easier and quicker. To do this, tape a small submersible bilge pump to a piece of 1 inch by 2 inch board and wire this to the battery with a length of electrical cable. Now attach a length of flex hose to the pump and tape it securely in place along the board. Leave some length free to direct water flow. A simple pump like this can bring rinse water into the boat by hanging it over the side. And it can also be used to pump out the cleanup water from inside the boat when you are finished. Now that you've scrubbed down your skiff and sluss bags or tote, 
and thoroughly rinse away the soapy water, you are ready to sanitize. Using your five-gallon bucket, mix up the sanitizing solution. One or two capfuls of Clorox bleach in five gallons of water is all you need. More than that is not better. Apply the sanitizing solution to the slush bag or tote and to all the inside surfaces of your skiff. Don't rinse off the sanitizing solution. Just scoop up or pump any excess that has accumulated inside the skiff. Throw away any gloves with holes. That's it. Your operation is clean and ready to deliver more top quality salmon in the next opening. Remember, gentle handling, bleeding, immediate chilling will allow you to deliver top quality salmon to your processor. These salmon are ready for the world market.